pretty much I was just gonna tell him today, you know, why was he recording me, delete the video. I seen he was like a grown, like older man, so like, I, I wasn't expecting much like of a altercation to happen. Well, good morning. Welcome back to Talking Racine. Uh, we'll see you in a couple minutes. Well, good morning. It's Monday morning, and you're back with Talking Racine. This is Mr. George Myers to my left. Morning. Morning. I'm Ken Jorgen, your host. we got Jim Spodek behind the camera there, and we have a special guest this morning. This is Christian Reynoso. Good morning. Christian is a young man who had an encounter with former Mayor Don John Dickert in the Piggly Wiggly parking lot. This was back on March 22nd, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, March 22nd. Yeah. So, uh, we thought we'd have Christian come in and talk a little bit about himself so you could become familiar with him. Everybody knows John Dickert, so it's only fair that we get to know the other contender in this championship bout. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Christian. That's right. So, uh... Tell us a little bit about yourself. You're, you're 18. You just graduated from high school, I guess. Uh, was it last year? Or? Uh, yeah, just uh, this past June I graduated. Yeah. Um, you went to Park High School because you live right near there, eh? Yeah, I uh, live right in front of Park. So. Yeah, I did too. Good school. <laughs> George went to. Some, I went to. He Oak went to Park. Some town, town in uh, near Chicago. Yeah. We have the same colors, by the way, as Park. Same colors. Yeah, too. yeah, orange and blue, which is. Chicago really? Bears, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Well, you know, this is a this is kind of an unusual circumstance that you find yourself in. Yeah, it's pretty now, weird. I talked to you once before, and from what I understand, you've never really been in any kind of trouble, have you? You got like a, a couple um, of traffic tickets or something goofy? Yeah, something little like that, but no. Yeah. I stay out, yeah, I stay out of trouble. Yeah, never been in any barroom brawls or anything like that. <laughs> no, nothing like that, yeah. So what exactly do you recall happening? I know that this encounter started out on the road. You want to explain the, sort of what happened there? Uh, yeah, so I was driving to work and um, John Dickert seen me um, pass somebody up and he didn't like it, I guess, so he started recording. Now, you didn't know at the time it was John Dickert, though, right? No, at the it, time... It was basically this guy was passing me by, and he yes, was... Yeah. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, yeah, he got he got mad, I guess, because I passed somebody up, and he started recording me while he's driving, and I'm just like, well, what are you doing? was kind of confused about it. What do you have, his, can, his, his phone his up phone, there? His phone, yeah, he had his in phone the, in the window. recording me, like, trying to take pictures of my <laughs> what, speeding up. You're alongside of him while he's driving forward, he's... Yeah, trying to take pictures. You. And um, <laughs> when we get to the light, um, right by Speedway, and um, he goes ahead, and then I stay back, like a couple, three cars links, or there's three cars separating us now. He turns into the Piggly Wiggly parking lot, and that's where I got to turn in for work too. Whoa! That's where going. <laughs> um, and that's kind of where it all started. So, um, well, you you work at Chick Fil A, is it, or no? I work at a uh, Panda Express. Panda Express. Yeah. yeah. So he turned in at the same place that you had to turn in. You weren't you weren't following yeah, him or no, anything. He's just, just going to work. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I seen I seen he pulled into the Piggly Wiggly parking lot, and I was just gonna like, I was like, all right, all right this is the same guy. So um, I pulled in right next to him. On my further, on my further side, I saw my driver's. He was on my um, passenger side. Um, pretty much, I was just gonna tell him today, you know, why was he recording me? Delete the video. I seen he was like a grown, like older man, so like, I, I wasn't expecting much like of a altercation to happen. So, um, kind of, he got out of his car. I put my window down. He got, he leaned up against my um, door. I don't remember exactly what he was saying. But I remember I told him to get off, get off my car. Um, he was just talking, yeah, he was just talking, smacking him, just kind of yelling. I was yelling at him too. Um, and that's when I seen another person in a car, and then he, he was kind of yeah, he was kind of walking towards the car too. And I was like, okay, what's going on here? What's your buddy doing? I was just like still confused at the moment, you know, just like not knowing what's going on really. Um, that's when uh, I see his buddy keep walking to the store, all right, and John Dickert, or the guy, he over to my side of the door, opens, or doesn't try to open it, but he's just sitting there, just like still kind of like saying things. I, I can't really hear him. I don't remember exactly what he was saying, but he was outside my door, and I was just looking at him. That's when I got out. Uh, he kind of grabbed me from the neck. Pushed me up against my car, and I, I didn't expect that at all. So like, I just uh, started 
Turn to vegetables. 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 Turn to um, now, somebody called the police apparently because they showed up. Yeah, there was a lot of people at the scene actually, like that tried to stop it because it was like right in the middle of a parking lot. So um, yeah, I guess somebody called the police. There were actually a couple of videos too. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some videos out there. Um, have you have you got any videos out of the one I have one of the videos. I know there's another one, but well, that's just a video that somebody took of uh, the, the kind of like the end of the incident, really, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was a toys that end. Yeah, because I know that uh, somebody has contacted the Piggly Wiggly store, which has security cameras, and tried to get a copy of the video. And uh, <clears throat> of course, the guy who's the the manager at Piggly Wiggly store, nice guy, but he didn't want to be involved in any way. He actually ended up turning the the tape over to the Mount Pleasant Police Department. Oh. Now, my understanding is that you actually requested information from. The, the Mount Pleasant Police Department or from the uh, store? You wanted, uh, you from, wanted to see that the, tape, right? Yeah, from the police department, I, uh, I asked for, you know, all the, the information on the case, which I got denied on. Uh, they didn't want to like, share any information because uh, the case wasn't prosecuted yet or something like that was what they said in the email. Yeah, but the interesting thing there, and I know somebody helped you write up the, uh, the response to that, and uh, the interesting thing is a quote <clears throat> from the Racine Journal Times, and this is his, uh, his attorney speaking to the Journal Times. On Mr. Dickert's behalf, I have been in touch with the Racine County District Attorney. We are in the process of exchanging information, and we ask that the public withhold judgment until all the facts are available. So John Dickert and his attorney uh, are exchanging information with the uh, district attorney, but when you request some information, you're told, uh-uh. Oh, uh, yeah, that's kind of what happened. Yeah. How does that make you feel? I don't know. Feel like a... <laughs> I feel like it's a little something going on, I really don't know. Feel like a full-fledged citizen with all the rights and privileges of everybody else? No. Not quite, yeah. Well, I don't blame you a bit. So, then you, once, once you got this um, refusal, to give you any information, then you sent in a, a demand for the release, and then they they didn't respond at all to that. Apparently, is that what I re re recall correctly? Yeah, they didn't respond to it. Just didn't even respond. No. No. Yeah. Have you had any other contact with him? Attempted to contact him in any way? Uh, no, I haven't had no contact with him since uh, that last email. Hmm. Quite a story. You know, Doc, it's, it's interesting that, that, that the Dickert side would immediately go up and start dealing with, this, with the DA, where Chris's side is walled off. But it's like Chris versus the establishment now. Yeah. You know, you know you're, you're, he's, he's, he's so. getting up against uh, a power structure that um, most citizens wouldn't be comfortable with. You know? Well, most citizens wouldn't even know you know, unless you were like watching in the newspaper and, and, and being very aware of everything, you probably wouldn't have even known that his attorney was in contact with the district attorney and with the uh, police yeah. department. I mean, you'd think, well, you know, I don't know what's going on. I, they, they took a bunch of information. I haven't heard anything. Mm -hmm. But by you being proactive, you've now exposed how unjust the system is, how yeah. one-sided the system is. Yeah, and actually, the, I did try to um, get an attorney mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. At first, uh, and actually, I called up uh, Cafferty because somebody recommended me to him, not knowing at the time. But uh, when I called him up, uh, he uh, he actually told no. me that he was who'd you, already. Who'd you call up? Cafferty. Pat Cafferty. Okay, and he mm -hmm. is. He's an attorney. He's you know? an attorney. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, get um, that straight. So um, I called him. He actually told me that uh, he was already defending um, John Dicker, and that was uh, kind of like a surprise to me. All that. I was kind of confused, and then, um, but he actually gave me like uh, a different number to call and somebody else. And I'm sure he was looking out for your best interests. No. You know, <laughs> he was going to give you somebody that would no doubt prevail against him in court. <laughs> yeah, you know, but I actually did end up calling that other guy mm -hmm. just, just to see what they were trying to do, and uh, 
Yeah, I guess they're really good buddies. He told me they're really good buddies. They've been, you know, good buddies for a while, and uh, he was gonna help me out. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> He's a good buddy with Cavity, but I'll help you out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, right. And I'm sure that they would both have uh, um, some monetary interest. I would think. I mean, they're not working for free, so. Well, that was, that's pretty interesting. So, why don't you give us a, a quick flex here? A quick flex? <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you got a tattoo to show or anything? <laughs> no, 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 no. Not even a tattoo? You're beating up a mayor with no tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been working over at the, the Panda Express? Uh, probably about two months. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's probably not a career path for you, or is it? I mean, what have you got plans for the future? What are you thinking about doing with Our your life? Our future, well... I didn't go to college uh, right away because mm -hmm. uh, I kind of wasn't looking for college right now. And uh, but I, I gave it some thought. I'm trying to save up some money. Uh, I was gonna get re reapplied into college, probably going for like a business um, degree or something like that. Mm -hmm. You got you got a high school high school home? diploma. Yeah. Listen. Well, I I think that's uh, pretty much covers it. We wanted everybody to get a chance to see who you are. You know, because there's a good likelihood that it's going to be portrayed as uh, you were the bad guy somehow. And uh, we didn't feel that that was fair because we had had a chance to en encounter you once before. And uh, now everybody that watches the show will, will see who you are. And I appreciate you coming on, Christian. All right, thank yeah, you. Sure. Wish you the best of luck. And uh, keep us posted. Let us know what happens. Yeah, well, I'll keep you guys posted. All right. All right. Yep. Thank you for having me. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we're back. Now that was a, one nice kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's, you know, you he's just, a nice just don't kid. picture someone like that ever doing anything much more than you know working and being a good good. Well, that's all he was doing. And, and instead of rumbling with the mayor, work. you know. Yeah. You know what? And I asked him. I said, "Well, after you got in this fight with the mayor, ex-mayor, he didn't know who he was." I said, "Did you go to work?" He goes, "Yeah, I had to get to work. Yeah, I was late." <laughs> okay, he was. He, he just, he's a nice kid. Just, nice yeah, kid. We enjoyed him. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was, was but he, he was he was a strong kid. I mean, he, yeah. I think he was probably a little stronger than what he maybe came across on the screen, because he wasn't a route to be just pushed around out there in yeah. the parking lot. You know, right. what, what are you leaning yeah. on my car for? You know, right. he, he was he was willing to push back a little bit. You know, and he, he did, I, and I understand he didn't want to get into it. You know. Uh, Real deeply, and I told him, "Don't do it because who knows what'll end up in the." In the well, it's run. not something he asked for. He's not right. no. looking for publicity. But he we, said, "You we know, actually had a, you had to reach out." He said, "He's a good kid, but he's not a total wimp, <clears throat> and no. he, he shouldn't be a total wimp if you're no. going to try and no. live, make it in this world." And, you know, you know, I mean, he's, you know, they, apparently, Dicker <laughs> got out of the car, came around to the passenger window, then went around to the driver window, and he uh. said, "All I wanted to do after I pulled in, I thought he said I pushed down the." Uh, passenger side window and then he said you know he's like leaning into my car still got the video camera on me like hey dude what are you doing this for and then he said he came around and he said that's when it started well, we, it a lot of times we do a little segment called george looks at the news oh yeah and i think we had a you know i mean this whole we got a little time this episode that. is a little weird already <laughs> today so what do you got yeah first one is um recount appeal filed Oh, well, that's like that, yeah, the referendum recount. Oh, who did do that? that? Yeah, who, would, who would be involved in that? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we so, know yeah, who's we, involved. Yes, we do. George, no, you're one of the petitioners. Yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. well, I was a petitioner for hot government. Yeah, and, and there, are, there are two others. Right. Jim There's, Sewell, who's an, Jim's an accountant. And right. He's well, he's a, he's a, a computer. He, he's a troubleshooter, a computer. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought he was an accountant. Yeah, no. I know he does a lot of accounting. He was yeah, he he's, he's very particular with that type yeah. of thing. But his, yeah. his job at, uh, at at work is Unico is actually when you know the it program goes wrong yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Going. So he's used to being very exact. You know how these computer guys are. You know, you know they have to have kept everything absolutely perfect. Otherwise, the computer spits out junk. So, right. so, so Jim was representing the was receiving the, 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 the taxpayers. No, no, he's the Libertarian Party. He's the Libertarian Party. Dennis yeah. Monty is the receiving yeah. taxpayers association. So we actually have uh, three groups, <clears throat> and they 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 work well with each other. They each have a slightly different uh, goal in line, mind, but um, I'm with uh, hot hot government, and um, this 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 five vote margin stayed at five votes. You know, I thought it got down to three or four. It did. Well, they had miscount. Well, as the day, as the week proceeded, yes, they got down to zero votes. Mm, you know, yeah. as, as things were happening in there, uh, because the vote is changing as you're doing evaluations on ballots and stuff like that. 
but it got down to actually zero very quickly, and then then it kind of rocked around there. And and the uh, later on, they, when they finally did a tally, they came up with four votes, but then they miscounted their own count. So then they had to, you know they didn't get it added right, yeah, so yeah. then they got back up to five. Well, you know one of the things, George, and maybe I'm, you know I'm I'm not probably as tied in as tight as you are with it, but from what I understand, there were. Uh, what they call a remade ballot. So a ballot would come in and it would be damaged or mm -hmm. for whatever reason ripped, it wouldn't go into the machine. Uh, maybe the envelope was opened and it was cut when it was opened. Yeah, that's happening. So they remake a ballot, correct? Right. And then they run that ballot through the machine, correct? Right. So uh, the clerk or whoever goes through, makes another ballot, puts the same markings on a new ballot. It's called, yep, puts called a replacement it through, ballot. Right. A replacement ballot. It goes through and then that ballot then is counted and this ballot is then put into another just, it was thrown into a, a, a compartment underneath the, in the machine okay. itself. You, and we, we watched them when they were doing it. Tara the, uh, Coolidge, the city clerk, was bringing over to see this one's damaged because we were watching the whole thing as, as the right. votes came in. And so they'd go over and make a replacement ballot, shove that in the machine, and you'd see them take the torn ballot or whatever, and they'd open up a little door and throw it into a... Okay, but here's underneath. the thing. What I'm yeah. going for is <clears throat> in this recount, they had replacement ballots but they had no evidence of the other ballot what's supposed to happen when that replacement ballot comes around the person who makes the new ballot is supposed to number them each whether it's number one two three whatever it is for that ward and initial them and then they feed it into the machine right. and throw the other one underneath so later on if there is such a thing as a recount or there's a challenge to it or something like that they have the evidence and they can put them together well there were a bunch of them that were not marked. How many would you say? I don't know. I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 or 20. Okay. All right. And that's just one part. And I do remember there's another part, and I don't want to kind of take this over, but I do, there was another one where there was a no vote on the referendum, and they had filled in the O of no. Now, it, it would take an old guy like me to understand that that particular ballot, because I, I, I understand it, you know. You know, you're, you're, you've got this ballot, and you got all these things, and on one side of it, there, there's names. It's all names. And he's, he, he filled in the, the dots perfectly, he or she, whoever it was. Get over to the other side, and now there's two referendums. Well, on one of them, he or she wanted to vote yes. That was the that was the uh, the, the victim witness thing. So if it went down to yes, and we got down to the next one, he wanted to vote no. Instead of filling in the dot, he filled in the O on no. Now, that's something that I would do. You know, yeah. <laughs> I can understand. Well, it. yeah, I, I think <laughs> you... I've been through all this confusion of this ballot, and I and now I got to get that last one. I filled in the O. <laughs> I think the intent was clear. <laughs> yeah, I think it was. But, they that, but that, that got thrown out. Yeah, that was real interesting because. At the, when when the when the tabulator was just starting to recount the the undervotes and threw that one out and said look at this one and we all looked at it oh look at that he put an O in there and it looked kind of like a joke at first but then they realized well we got it let's evaluate it now the three board of canvassers who are all unified school district administration personnel they took a vote on it. And actually one of them, that was the only split vote, I believe, in the whole week of the hundreds and hundreds of votes they did. It was two to one. One gal thought, no, that looks to me like that person meant to vote no. Mm -hmm. But the other two voted yes. So I, I was standing right there. So I put in a challenge. It's all marked and all that type of stuff. Right. And I think we will win that in the appeal. So instead of five votes, we're already down to four. Okay, so we're, we're talking an appeal. We're talking a lot of votes that are really very... Questionable is how they were. Jim, the whole thing's a joke. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a billion dollar joke. It's a billion, George. That's it's, a it's, terrible it punchline. It <laughs> there, there was a difference. Of, there were a difference of five votes, and in ninety-one instances, they were drawing cards out of a stack of cards to ballots, determine which ballots. Ballots. Yeah. ballots. They were you know, they're, they're big cards out of us, but they're, they're ballots. Yeah. But I like to liken it to, you know, like the magician does, he just pick a card, any card, is that type of thing. They pull one out, and whatever vote that is, it gets subtracted from right. the total. Yeah. See, and there were, that was done 91 times. So basically what happens there is, they know that there is a ballot in there, and typically this happened because something was wrong with the envelope that the ballot came that's right, in. That's right. It was an illegal so that, vote. So that vote had to be taken out, but they couldn't identify the ballot that went with that envelope. So oh, they would something. randomly take a ballot out of Somebody the... Somebody else's vote out. So <laughs> what was going on was all of those 
ballots that were in envelopes that were de de determined to have been cast illegally or inappropriately, they remained in there. Right. I mean, the because bad, because the, bad the, the likelihood of pulling a bad ballot out was practically, practically nothing. Practically nothing. Uh, Ninety-one ballots out of fifteen, so out people, of thirty thousand. No. So ballots that were cast yeah. inappropriately were kept in, right. and other ballots that were cast according to the rules properly were taken out to compensate so that the numbers would match. Okay, there, there's so ninety-one people who voted properly, filled their envelopes out, had witnesses, everything right. <laughs> their vote was taken back out. Okay, here's the other thing. What about the envelopes that there's some that aren't even opened? They don't. They have ballots in envelopes currently that yeah. aren't opened? Well, those, those just sat there. They were never counted, never done anything with those. And those but were those because they didn't have a witness signature? Yeah, or? Some, some of them were. were yeah, they, they, okay. there was no, you know, a ballot comes in the mail. Some of them didn't have anything signed. Okay. That was, those, those weren't very many of those. Okay, but, here, here, yeah. okay, and I'm, I'm just going to say, okay, let's look at it this way. So now we talk about a mail-in ballot. We're going to send them all to the city, and we're going to get all this back. So somebody says, well, I'm going to vote, and I make a mistake on my ballot. Now you've got uh, uh, your ballot becomes void because you didn't sign it, you didn't do something. So now right. that, that's a difficulty in voting. You may think it's a convenience. But it also could be a difficulty, especially for uh, people that are unfamiliar with this. Well, it's a difficulty, Jim. But here's the thing: if it, it you, there's a there's a problem with fraud in when it comes to electronic voting like this, or voting by mail and, and this type of right. thing. Too I many mean, hands. It, it, there are too many hands are watching it, and 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 you know they they send these things out. You, you back when. It started I mean, when I was very young, and I remember going to the clerk's office and having to sign the paper and do my voting right there. See, uh, I've, uh, that was that was rel still relatively clean. You know, the clerk could see how I voted, and you know, they counted it and all that type of stuff. They didn't have machines in those days, but still, it was it was a good clean vote. Now it just gets out in the mail. Well. Anybody could get that darn thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's the thing that I'm concerned about because I've heard. Reports of, of several people who said they never received a ballot that I, they, I, they requested. And I'm glad you brought that up because, <clears throat> listen, if you know anybody that has did not get their ballot in the mail, I want to know. You know, if you find out anybody, trace it down. Then our next step is we're going to take that person, get that person's name and address, and see if they came up that they voted. Yeah. If it if it shows up that they did not vote, well then they just then that's they got, fine. They, they, got, got lost. they got screwed. But but if it if it turns out that it shows that they voted and they never got their ballot, then guess what? Somebody intercepted. Somebody else voted. And I saw one ballot. We saw one ballot like that, and it was rejected because the person's name very clear, and the person that wrote it was almost in like childlike beginning writer's script. You know, big obvious. Yeah. Name like John Smith, and it was Susie Wilkins' ballot. Yeah. <laughs> John Smith. It wasn't scribbled in. <laughs> it was yeah. out of somebody else signed that ballot. So, but so back back to the ballot thing. The thing is, there there are some things that are required. You, the person has to sign it. The person that voted, and there must be a witness, and the witness has to give their address. Where do they live? You know, can't be just somebody out in Timbuktu or something like that, in case they want to trace it down for whatever reason. The, the, the intent is to avoid fraud, and that resulted in many, many, I would say hundreds of illegal ballots. I mean, I just looked at right. this whole thing like it is a complete <clears throat> mess. Well, and, the, 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 the problem is that there was this big response to this uh, uh, quarantine or shutdown or whatever you want to call it. So there's a big response to that. They made adjustments in the electing, in election pr procedure, the voting procedure, and then there was objections to the adjustments that were made. And then, it, I mean, it, it got to where it was just the integrity was completely lost. Yeah, and, and people glad, had no idea I'm how glad they you brought that up because but that's another thing. Remember, they changed the voting dates. Yeah, first yeah. they were going to get yeah. to put it for a while. There was a day even where a court had ordered that if you couldn't get a witness because of the the coronavirus thing, put down COVID nineteen. And that will so that will be fine. And there were about four. And then they changed like that. They changed and then that. They that. Yeah. So. And that made all those ballots illegal. But here's here's the other thing. I, I say there are hundreds, and I don't mean to imply. I mean, like I sounded like I probably did. Is that it was those four things? You know, the witness signature, the witness address, and the voter address. I tell you what, a lot of them were. At least half of them were late ballots. Mm -hmm. 
all right, where yeah. they were where they were voting late and they voted after the seventh. There were there were a lot of well, here's problems the other with thing, dates. George, too. I just want to get to this point. You had the attorney was hired by. Oh, this is yeah another yeah unified so, correct right now right. a petitioner that said I'm going to be a petitioner that was also a unified hire attorney no the the petitioner the one we're talking about the the, the Chris oh he was hired he was hired by yes for students oh, or something okay, like yes that for kids he was essentially for unified right. he was okay. for the, he was so they basically he petitioned <laughs> he put that very he put himself in a very unusual situation he petitioned for a recount but he was for the results. Yeah, exactly. So, so he was in there they defending had two attorneys. to make sure they had somebody, yeah, who they was... had two attorneys overseeing the three canvassers who were All, unified employees. Right. And, and the canvassers Chris, are like the, the judge, you yeah, know, right. they, they judge each one. Now, what, what could possibly go wrong here, George? Well, it, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Nothing to see here. It is such... It's bogus as hell, and we all know it is. No, if, if there's any legislators or any, you know, like a Robin Voss or something like that, this part of the law really needs to be changed. Shit, they probably like it, George. I, I swear to God, yeah. these legislators, they look at this stuff and say, well, if we can skirt an election, we're going to do it on both sides. I, I don't have any faith in the. the well, the, 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 the thing is, is, is when that, it comes to legislators, the way it's set up is the the city that holds the election. If also, you know, they they, they set up the poll workers and all that type of stuff. They will also do the counting. All right. Right. Which we're 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 used to that. And if there's a recount, like we've seen some aldermanic races really close, they also do the recount. Same people do all three steps. Well, when it comes to the recount. They're relatively unbiased. I'm not saying they don't have a favorite they might want to see, yeah. but they aren't in the person's camp. You're not taking one one of the aldermen and have his poll, his uh, campaign workers and that stuff doing the recount, right? It's the clerk's office who's somewhat right. unbiased. Well, when it comes to a referendum, the person that holds the referendum and does the recounting is one side of the thing. Yeah. And then when it comes to the challenge, the, 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 the recount, uh, the, the election and then the counting, and when it comes to the recount, they're on one side of the fence. Right. But this time and, now, and people like appeal? me are, are on the outside looking in, you right. know. Right. Well, and that's that's that's, yeah, that's one of the things that was brought up in the uh, the, the appeal. Uh, it was a statement made by one of the other petitioners who said, I realized very quickly that this was not about finding the truth. This was an adversarial process. It was that's us right. against them. That's right. And, yeah. and, I, that, and the law needs to be <clears throat> changed for referendums and that's an easy thing yeah. to do you say yeah. when it comes to a referendum there will be an outside group come in and run the recount now i don't think that comes up very often how no, often okay. do you see a, recount, a referendum right. this close not too often Most but they of them should have i'm not sure but, i ever heard of one before quite honestly right. I don't know. okay well here's the other thing what now <laughs> with the uh, appeal that's happening it, it, that's a circuit court action you now the appeal was uh, uh Reg or filed. Now there's going to be a complaint that's going to be a little more detailed. All that ballots and the, all the information now goes to the county clerk from all the municipalities, and then that is locked and sealed at the at the courthouse where it now can be. Uh, it needs to be viewed. done before yeah. anybody can get in there and start fooling around with those ballots. Okay. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay, so we're we're, we're at, the, at the appeal process or complaint process. It's going to go in front of a judge, and then at that point we. Uh, We'll see where it goes. Yeah, no, the, here, here's the other thing. This this, this is going to cost a couple bucks. I mean, you know, I was just going to mention yeah, that. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, and if, if, if everybody who voted in node in that election were to put in one buck, yeah. we'd have plenty of money. Was it, you know, Spend a dollar, save a billion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I would recommend you, you know, and if you want to cover for nine people that uh, I didn't see the message or something, then put in ten bucks instead of one buck. Uh, it would be appreciated because that you know that will really help out with the legal legal cost of this. Because it's expensive. And, and it, and it, yeah. And well, it, how do they do that? They, well, they go to hotgovernment.com. <laughs> glad you asked that. Yeah. 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 Go to hot, hot government, government right hot here. Hotgovernment.com. Just yeah. go there. There's a button to push right at the top there. Yep. Right, right, put, well, put, put electronically your, put, push the button. Yeah. 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 Just put, in, put in your ten bucks, you know, and that's yeah. good. And yeah. if you if you got a couple extra bucks to find, that's fine too. But I would I would just say anybody that's watching the show, if you, if you if you would if you like the idea of appeal, show it by putting in ten bucks into that into that. Uh, I think city. we should make a promise right here. Now, af after the the recount was over. And it, and it looks like, at, at least at that time, that Unified was going to prevail with their referendum. The champagne came out and there was a celebration. <laughs> That's another thing, yes. Yeah. So uh, I, 
I think I can't believe they did that. I understand there's a pledge on the part of hot government that there'll be no champagne. Yeah. With any donation dollars. You can't afford it. This unbiased guy that did the counting when they came up with the yeah. at that time they always only thought it was only four. They broke out the champagne celebrating that. That's all the I mean, recount is and so the judges boring. and. If it, and the jury oh, and all that. The glasses. I and all. <laughs> well, I, I know there were a lot of people who were conscientious that really wanted to find the truth, but this system is so flawed. It's, and there were so sucks. many changes. <laughs> it, it's just not possible to understand what the true sentiment of the voters was in that election. <clears throat> all right. Thank you for being here. We'll be back next week. We hope you are, too, because it's no fun without you. <laughs>